All right, boat enthusiasts, welcome back to the 100th hour. Since last time, Espen has chiseled these to make it the curves of the boat uh, really nice. And uh, this process is called the fairing. I have to have a cheat sheet. Down here, uh, it's called the share line, but right, uh, this is just some for to show. Uh, we'll be applying the share line on the other side of the boat today. So that's the next step. The shear line is the point where the hull meets the deck of the boat and getting it right is very important for the look. The important thing is to get all curves and lines on the boat to work together to achieve a harmonious design. A trained eye will be able to spot if something is off. CG Peterson was a master at this and so was the Italian Riva. Furuholmen in Norway, Garwood in the US and many others in the era of motorboats from 1900s to the 1960s. And do remember to pre-drill the holes. What you see here is that Espen taped every second board. He glues the share line together and by taping it like this the hole will release easier from the form. This is the second episode of the boat build and if you want to take it from the beginning press the top link here or you can wait until the end of this video. Now Espen applies glue to the top of the shear line before adding the next wooden strip and from here it's just a matter of replicating the same technique over and over again until it closes off at the bottom of the boat. This boat is a home design, but the inspiration is from Scandinavian designs around 1910 to 1930. During this process of gluing and screwing the strips on, Espen chose to add a wooden piece to clamp down the top strips, which is necessary because of the curved shape. This whole process took about 50 hours. Alright guys, we're back at the uh, 150th hour at Espen's uh, palace. Um, he started out with these big uh, pine pieces and now he's uh, shortened them to about uh, maybe one third or one half of, of the size. And you see he has to use more glue when it starts to curve more and he uses these smaller uh, lists. Uh, what do you call it uh, in English? Uh, I, I wish you'd ask me before because I can't remember right now. Okay, uh, he doesn't know either. We call them lists. Strips. <laughs> strips, okay, we call them strips. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you more footage of the boat. He's just practically been doing the same over and over and over and over and over again. And uh, he's about to uh, close the top. Um, so. I'll show you some pictures of what is done so far.
wood lovers uh, I guess we broke off the last time at around uh, 180 hours now Espen he's been uh, slaving on this uh, boat for 70 more hours so we're up at around uh, 250 and uh, what he's done is uh, he's been hand planing uh, and he's been sanding and he's been filling all the holes uh, uh, with uh, this uh, stuff and then sanded it again and uh, he's been all of this he's been preparing to put on a glass fiber cloth so he'll be dressing it in gluing this cloth on and uh, let me just uh, take it over to Espen doing his stuff here you see Espen having laid the pieces of fiberglass on the boat, measuring how he wants to place the different parts, and then he writes down the order on which piece goes where. He then removes the pieces in order to put glue on the wood before adding the fiberglass. And when it comes to the gluing, it helps having some friends around. Uh, all this stuff, uh, not, not that mean and hard, they're really seeing it. Not hard, but they don't give us a lot of thoughts. Yeah, we're going to blow me or something like that. Use the vent. Espen start laying the biaxial fiberglass in two layers of 450 grams each per square meter. This will give the boat a protective layer against the elements. And together with fiberglass on the inside of the hull as well, it will produce a lightweight yet strong hull. Here are two ways of getting rid of air pockets. One, you can punch them out. Or two, you can roll them out. The weight will be approximately 30% lighter than an equal fiberglass boat. the double fiberglass layer, Espen will add a peel ply cloth which is used to remove the wax that forms on epoxy when curing. When the cloth is removed after the epoxy has cured, the wax comes along with it and leaves a surface that is ready for fairing right away. Without peel ply we would have to sand the whole boat to remove the wax, a very tedious job since cured epoxy is hard like glass. And if you haven't gotten around to see the first episode yet, Here's your chance.